welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenna, if you're new here. I was really inspired to share what I am giving up for Lent this year. So every year I try to fast from something for Lent. Some years it's successful and I stick to it, others not so much. And so this year though, I really do think I'm going to stick to what I am fasting from. I thought I would share it in case anyone wants to hop on because it is never too late to observe Lent and to kind of partner with me and maybe be accountability buddies or whatnot because I was really just thinking about this today and I've been making some observations because I am on day four right now of just already things that I've noticed have come from fasting from this thing. So I want to talk about that today and hopefully check in after the end of this season of Lent to see if there is any additional wisdom that have come from the past 40 days. So let's get into it. So first, what even is the season of Lent. If you have clicked on this video, likely you do already know what it is because you're probably attracted to it for that reason, but there's a possibility that you may not know. So the season of Lent, it's specifically, I'm going to read off this description. Lent is a Christian season of spiritual preparation before Easter. It is a period of 40 days, not including Sundays, that starts on Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Saturday. During Lent, many Christians observe a time of fasting, repentance, moderation, self-denial, and spiritual discipline. Lent is a way of remembering the events leading up to and including the death of Jesus Christ, the foundation of Christianity. Now, I grew up as a non-denominational Christian, and I actually didn't really explore the season of Lent until I went off to college. I attended Westmont College, and we observed Ash Wednesday. And so we would go in for chapel gatherings. They would describe the season of Lent. And that was actually my first introduction. I had celebrated Easter, but I wasn't as aware of the tradition of Ash Wednesday and then the season of Lent between Ash Wednesday and Easter. I hadn't really explored that too much within the churches I was attending. And I honestly really love this season of self-reflection leading up to such an important day in the Christian faith when Jesus rose again from the dead. It is why we have our hope. So I really love this tradition of celebrating the season of Lent. Without any further ado, let's go through what I have decided to give up for Lent in 2024. This came about when I was actually praying and I was praying, which is good. It should probably come up when you're praying and you're seeking God. But I was actually praying because I felt a little bit overwhelmed by my schedule. If you have watched any of my other videos, you know that I am a high achiever and I have a lot going on. So if you want to see exactly what I have going on, you can watch my goals video for 2024 where I reset for the year and I set all my goals for the year. And I have been following these goal trackers for the year so far. I really want to be faithful in the goals that I have set for myself and be really ethical in the work that I do. And so because of that, I reached a stage lately where I feel like I'm falling behind on a few goals. I missed a few video uploads and was falling behind on the two week schedule that I wanted to keep to. I was missing that writing goal as I was pursuing that my book. I was writing in it and continuing to open it, just not at the speed that I wanted to. And I just felt like I had a lot of goals all over the map. So I sat down and I was praying, God, please show me what I need to cut where. I don't want to live an overwhelmed life. I don't want to do too much. I do believe that a lot of these things are meant for me, whether it's creating content or writing novels, but maybe it means that I'm not supposed to during this time. Maybe it means I need to shave back on how much I'm expecting of myself. And so I just really sat in that time and asked for some feedback, asked for some direction and guidance and wisdom when it came to the quantity of goals that I was setting for myself. And in response, I heard so clearly God's voice and potentially I can do another video too on how I hear God's voice, but I heard God's voice very, very clearly say, before we cut anything, first cut TV. 
Now, for me, I am not a crazy TV watcher by any means. I don't spend hours in front of a screen, but I do have shows that I enjoy watching. Specifically, I am a big game show person. I love The Challenge. I love Big Brother. I love Survivor and even Amazing Race. So I love like reality game show type shows. That's just what I personally like to watch. And so I usually watch an episode or two in the evenings. That's kind of my typical routine. Maybe on the weekends I might watch more, but it isn't something that I do necessarily in excess. But I felt a strong conviction that I felt like I was running out of time to do everything that I was feeling called to do, but there is this big old block of time that I'm spending doing something that isn't life-giving, it isn't productive. I think that there needs to be space for those things in everyone's life. Do not get me wrong on that. But for example, one of my goals for the year is to read a certain amount of books. I can get that same mental turnoff by reading a book as I can watching a Survivor episode. So I decided for Lent, based on this strong conviction to give up TV. And I also though, with giving up TV, realized that there was going to be periods of boredom where I'd want to turn on something else to replace that TV time, that mental numbing shut off time that we all want to go through, especially towards the end of the day. So I set up a few guidelines. I'll put them right here. And the biggest one being a five minute time cap on social media. I didn't want to watch TV and then turn to doom scrolling as my form of screen entertainment. And I didn't want to cut out movies because movie watching specifically with my husband or my family or going to the theaters, going to the theater. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. That is a part of a big quality time thing. And it isn't the same like mind numbing. I'm going to kind of escapism. It's not the same motivation when I'm watching a movie with my husband as when I am, you know, eating dinner, watching a survivor episode or feeling overwhelmed and instead of knocking some tasks off that I know will help push me forward in my goals I run from it and hop in a bubble bath and watch a survivor episode with a glass of wine so it has become kind of an escapism thing and I just felt convicted to give it up for a season of time leading up to Easter so no TV, specifically no social media for longer than five minutes basically when I hop on or I click Instagram or maybe I wanna watch a few TikToks during the day, I will set a five minute timer whenever I pop on and it is surprising how fast five minutes goes. You can truly watch maybe two people's stories, read through a post, maybe one TikTok and that's it. And then your five minutes is up. So I have already felt a difference in giving these things up just in four days of doing so. And so I want to hit on those observations I have made real quick. And then I would love to check in later once I have finished this season to see if these things still hold true. So one observation I have noticed so far is the time when I most want to escape. And for me, it's actually eating dinner. And that is an interesting thing to me. And it does make a lot of sense. I thought about growing up, oftentimes we would have kind of family meal time while watching a TV show. That was kind of a habit that I got into growing up. And so I look for some entertainment while I'm eating. I feel so antsy and self-conscious about eating without anything to distract my mind. And so that was a very interesting observation I have made so far is that often the strongest urge to be distracted and to escape is actually when I'm eating dinner, which I find fascinating because potentially dealing with this habit can also have some really good effects on just mindful eating and diet and portion control. Not that there's anything too excessive happening in those realms of life, but I can see where there is a bad habit connection that is happening. So that has been a really helpful observation I have made so far. Another observation is that without having the screened distraction, I noticed that I have been looking around the house, actually physically looking around the house more, and it has made me aware of, oh wait, there was that project I wanted to get on. Oh, I wanted to reorganize the room. Or even this here happened yesterday when this cabinet was in Henry's closet 
it had his books in it, but he would always go into his closet and he would bang open and shut the doors and it has glass. So I was always afraid the glass would shatter. So I always told myself in the back of my mind, okay, I really need to move that outside of his bedroom so that he doesn't shatter the glass and just put all of his books into a bin where he can just go in and pick out all of his books. And so that is something that I had been thinking about forever, but I was so distracted by because I noticed it, I find I've just been more mentally observant of my surroundings, the less I'm distracted. And it's caused me to check off some to-do list items that weren't even on my to-do list that were kind of a, oh, reminder in the back of my mind, this is something I want to get to. I ended up getting to it. So I really appreciated that so far. What I haven't appreciated is that means my house right now is a disaster. <laughs> I have had so many projects like, oh, I should do this. And so we ended up buying a new TV stand yesterday. So we're swapping around kind of the living room. So the whole house is kind of in unrest right now. So it has its pros, but it has its cons as well. Cause now there's a lot more tasks for me to do, but ultimately I'm really excited for where this is going to go. I am really curious to see if this allows me space and time to do the things that I've currently outlined for myself to do or whether it reveals that my schedule is still too full to do those things, to have enough time for rest and peace in the midst of productivity. So I'm really curious to see what else the rest of the 40 days, approximately a month is going to bring as I continue to surrender the habit of TV watching and doom scrolling. So that is what I am giving up for Lent in 2024. I would love to hear what you've decided to sacrifice for this month or any thoughts, feelings, emotions around fasting for Lent. I feel like it can be a really powerful spiritual practice for bringing us closer to Christ, but I feel like there also could be some negative feelings and connotations and maybe triggers around restricting yourself, especially because a lot of it has to do with diet. A lot of people will give up caffeine or sugar. And I think those things are amazing because there's a lot of compulsion and strong urge and desire to, you know, eat certain things or to have your diet as a certain way. So I feel like that fast can be so powerful and effective, but it just depends. Maybe it can be also triggering for other people. So I would love to hear your thoughts or feelings around the topic. Thank you so much for watching this video. It means so, so much to me that you did. If you liked it, please remember to give it a little thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel for content that might be similar to this in the future. I cannot wait to catch you on the next video. Bye friends.